Section 1.5, Compound Inequalities. So, union of sets A and B. A upwards U, B. Think of all the items in groups A and B inside a bowl of soup. So, anything that's in groups A and B, I just dump them all together and I want all of them. Intersection of sets A and B, or A, and looks like, looks like an upside down U, B. You're going to think of the shared common items of A and B groups underneath the rainbow, so which means group A has some items and group B has some items. What they have in common would be known as their intersection. So we have example one. It says we're given the sets A, little a, B, C, D, E, and F. Set B has A, C, E, G, I, and K. Set C has G, H, I, J, and K. So they want us to find the A. Now remember, this means union. B. So when I think of union, I think of bowl, like a bowl of soup. So I look at A and B, and I want everything from A and B. Just do not repeat letters that are already there. So A, B, C, D, E, F. I've already used the A, I've already used the C, and I've already used the E. So now I'm going to add G, I, and K. G, I, K. That is the union of A and B. On B, they want us to find A. Remember, upside down U means intersection. So think of your rainbow and B. So I'm looking at A and B and what do they have in common? Well, A has the letter A and B has the letter A. So I want the A. A does not, A has B, but B does not. So I don't want it. C is in both of them. So you want the C. D is not. E is in both of them, so you want the E. F, nope, and G-I-K is not. So ACE or A-C-E, that is your intersection of A and B. C wants us to look for the intersection of A and C. When I look at A, it goes A, B, C, D, E, and F. C has G, H, I, J, and K. They have nothing in common. So this is known as an empty set or a nil set. So remember, this is known as your empty set. So you can either write the word empty set, the nil set, or a set builder notation with nothing inside it. Example two says we're given the sets of A. Well, now they're giving us them all in set builder notation. So A, set A is X if and only if X is less than three. Set B is X if and only if X is greater than or equal to negative 2. And C is X less if and only if X is greater than or equal to 5. So when we come to a problem like this, we look at the situation. So in A, they want us to find A intersection of B. So remember, that's your rainbow. But because they gave it to us in set builder, and we want to find out where do they share in common. The easiest way to do set when they give it to you in set builder is put it on a number line, graph it. So we're gonna graph both groups on the same number line. So I'm gonna put zero for my neutral point. Group A says X, if and only X is less than three. So here's my three. Notice it is an open statement. So at three, I'm open and I'm going to the left. Then they want us to find B. Well, B says where X is greater than or equal to negative two. So when we look at the left side, here's negative two. And now there's an inequality that says greater than or equal to, which means this is closed. So at two, I am closed, but I'm going to the right. So remember, rainbow, which means where do they overlap? When we look at our interval lines, between negative two and three is where they fall because this arrow is not stopping at here. The arrow is pointing to the left, so it's going straight to negative infinity. This arrow is not stopping at the three, it's going to positive infinity. They fall in between the negative two and the three. So we are closed at negative two, open at three. So here's your values for the intersection. When they want us to find the union, here's A union C, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna graph it on a number line. Here's zero. 
Again, remember, A is open, starting at three, going to the left. But on C, it says X is greater than or equal to five. So it means the five is out here. So our five is here and says greater than or equal to, which means it's closed. Closed at five, going to the right. When we come to the situation and they want us to write it in set builder, notice that there was a break in our graph. Because remember, this is union and wants everything. So let's look at our situation here. This arrow is pointing to the negative infinity. So I'm going from negative infinity up to three and three is an open. So I'm going to switch parentheses. And see this break here? This is where it's a union because I want to include everything. So I'm going to put my union symbol. The five says it's closed. So I'm going to put a bracket for the five and the arrow is pointing to positive infinity. Close the parentheses. So we have two interval pieces when there's a union involved. If the arrow lines never cross each other. Example three, a less than x less than b. When you have a variable contained between two boundary points, it's known as your intersection or an and statement. So they want us to solve two is greater than or equal to p minus two divided by negative three greater than or equal to negative one. Before we can start this problem, first thing we're gonna do is make them fractions. So put those, make them improper by putting them over one. Put parentheses around your p minus two because that is a binomial piece and we need to be able to isolate. You wanna get rid of this denominator of value of negative three. So you're gonna multiply the left, the right, and the middle by negative three. Remember the rule, if when you multiply or divide by a negative, you change the direction. So we become negative six less than equal to now because I changed my inequality symbol. The negative threes cancel, so we still see p minus two. Change your direction less than or equal to, negative and negative makes it positive three. So now we're at this point. Remember, again, we're more working from the inside outwards, so it's negative two. Not only do you add negative two to the middle, you're adding it to the left and the right to get rid of them. So we come negative four, less than or equal to p by itself, less than or equal to five. Now, when we look at this, notice that they both have the greater than, the less than equal to symbols. There's a line underneath it, which means these are closed statements, which means brackets. So if I'm gonna write this as interval notation, negative four is my lowest value, positive five is my highest value. So from negative four, bracket negative four, comma, positive five, close the bracket. If you wanted to graph it, on a number line. Here's zero, I'm gonna write this as negative four. Here's my five. We are close circles at both of them and they connect. It looks like a little dumbbell effect. Example four, it says X is greater than A or X is less than B. So when you have an or statement, these are our unions. That's why the word or happens. So they want us to solve negative three y minus five less than four or four minus y less than equal to six. You're gonna solve both equations and because it's a union, they want you to write interval notation based on what your solution values are. So before we start, first thing we need to do is we're gonna work with the one on the left. I'm gonna add five over. So we get negative three y greater than positive nine divide by a negative and because I divided by a negative I'm changing the direction so positive y is now less than 9 divided by negative 3 is negative 3. Remember it's the word or. Going to the equation on the right first subtract the 4 over so we get negative y less than equal to positive 2. Now remember you don't want the y by itself you want it you don't want it negative, so I'm dividing both sides by negative one. Again, it changes the direction. So now y, instead of being less than, now it's greater than or equal to. Two and negative one is still negative two. So the values for y have to be less than negative three or the values of y have to be greater than or equal to negative two. So to figure out what our interval is gonna look like, easiest way to do it is first graph it. 
So I'm looking at a number line. Here's my zero. I'm going to make negative two here. Here's my negative three. It says here the y is less than negative three, which means this is an open circle. And the arrow is pointing not to the y, it's going to the left of the y, so less left of negative three, which means negative infinity. So at negative three, I'm open, going to the left. The second one says y is greater than or equal to negative two, so it means the arrow tip, the inequality is pointing to after the negative two to the right of it. So at negative two, I am, remember this is now closed. So closed at negative two, going to the right. So this is a double interval notation because there's a break in your graph. So we're going from negative infinity up to negative three with a parenthesis because it's open, your union symbol, a bracket because it's closed at negative two going to positive infinity. So here's our interval notation. Example five says the normal level of thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, for adults ranges from 0 0.4 to 4.8 micro units per milliliter. So, or micro units per milliliter. We're going to let X represent the amount of TSH measured in micro units per milliliter. So, in part A, they want you to write an inequality representing the normal range of TSH. So, normal range. They tell you that the range is from 0 0.4 to 4.8. That's what they consider the normal range. So now, because it's normal range, this is known as your and statement. So x is in the middle, and it says the values of your normal range can be 0 0.4, including 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 is on the left. I put less than or equal to x, because that can include 0 0.4, which is less than or equal to 4.8 because I can include 0 .4, uh, 4 4.8. If I was 4.9, then it, that would be an excluded value. That's what they want you to do for part A. Part B, they want us to write in a compounding inequality representing the abnormal. This is your abnormal. And when they're talking about abnormal, think of your or statements, which means there should be two equations. So now, note, remember it said, I can be considered a normal adult with 0 0.4. If my TSH level falls below 0 0.4, then that's considered abnormal. So when X is less than 0 0.4, and these are also known as your open statements because there would not be including the 0 0.4, or if I was above a 4.8, so when X is greater than 4.8, and here would be your compound inequality.